Hello, Dr. Gilda. Welcome to Wake Up with Marcy. It's such a pleasure to be here today. And this is a great topic to talk about. I'm telling you, I, it's just so important, right? Our children going back to school, how they've been affected by COVID. And I'm just so grateful to have you on and help us with this process, getting our kids back in. They have just been through a major trauma. We have all been through this major trauma. And exactly. to think that we can just send our children back into the fold as though everything is normal and to put aside any idea that, oh no, everything's fine, everything's fine, is ridiculous. We cannot bury our heads in the sand. I know, I know. So let's get to it. Okay. I want to talk about that trauma that you just brought up. And one of the things that I was very curious about was we've been telling our children, you know, put on your mask, don't talk to people really, you know, don't touch anyone. Uh, you know, how has this affected our children? From everything that we know, and again, this is going to be a longitudinal kind of examination as we see what happens day after day after day. But from everything we know, the kids are terrified. The kids have not had friends to play with. They have not interacted with human beings. All they've been doing has been facing their, their devices and mm -hmm. not having eye contact. This has created horrendous communication skills among our kids. Absolutely. And it is so important, like you just said, the eye contact, that right there is so vital to connect with people. So let's talk about building those relationships and oh. how we can help our children oh. <laughs> to build relationships, you know, going forward. Well, that's music to my ears because you know, we teach or theoretically, traditionally, we have been teaching the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, thinking mm -hmm. that that's what we do. And many school systems have been teaching for the tests, for the standardized tests. Mm -hmm. And what we have omitted has been a fourth R that I call respectful relationships. And mm -hmm. this is so vital, especially now. We have got to understand that our kids have been starving for relationships, relationships with everybody, their peers, their teachers, the administrators, everybody around. And if they are so fearful that they're keeping people at arm's length, then they are yeah. not going to interact. And this is all supposedly preparation for getting a job eventually and being mm -hmm. interviewed eventually and all those things that we as adults take for granted. We are absolutely teaching mm -hmm. our kids what they really need to learn. Yes, the three R's are very important. And I was a teacher in the South Bronx and I taught the three R's, but I also taught relationships because that was so essential. Well, I mean, let's think about it. That is so important to our children. It's important to everyone, but the socialization is such a vital part of school for our children um, to connect, to be accepted, and to know how to do that. Well, so let's talk about the facts, okay? We, you we just, have been, I'm sorry. You just brought up something that is so critical children want to be accepted as mm -hmm. they get older the teenagers the middle school mm -hmm. kids before they even become teenagers want acceptance now how do you get acceptance if you're not near anybody if you don't know that anybody is even positively leaning towards you mm -hmm. i mean how do you know this how do you judge the, the facts from the fictions out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's so many kids that went into isolation. And listen, some kids are really good with socialization and some are not, right? So 
they're in isolation, feeling extremely depressed because they're unable to connect to others. So how can we get them to get out of their shell and move forward? As crazy as this sounds, uh, just recently, Kim Kardashian came out and said that her whole experience being kidnapped and robbed in Paris mm. started to come up for her. And currently she is going through agoraphobia because she has the memory of yeah. all of the things that happened to her and being in the house and isolated brought that right up again. Now, little children are not going to express, mommy, I think I have agoraphobia, but of course, parents have got to be on guard to see the, the things that the kids are doing, the, the, the things that the kids are dropping out of, the things that the kids yeah. say, no, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go without any reason. And this is why that element of communication between the parent and the child is so vital now. Now, when we do, when we ask kids, what are the facts? What, what, what's make believe? I mean, we can do this as a game. Here's a story. Let me read you this story. What is real? What is not real? What is fact? Mm -hmm. What is fiction? And build that up for older kids so that they can differentiate. And differentiation is one of the higher level skills that kids learn as a result of having respectful relationships. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about that. The facts that we are giving, what's real, what is not. And now having our children have these discussions with us and really understanding where they're at. How do we probe the questions? How do we get them to respond to us openly and honestly? And for them to actually even know how to communicate with us uh, so we can help them in their needs. Well, you know, we want to protect our kids. And so mm -hmm. when the kid says, oh, I had this terrible nightmare, Oh, no, nah, it's nothing. So we as parents very often try to trivialize without recognizing it's not really a trivial, trivial, trivialization, but mm -hmm. it's really something that that the child is looking at as, well, my feelings don't count. So right. that is very, very important for us to not say, ah, oh, don't worry about it, it's okay. Children all want to know that they are being protected, no matter where they go. That sense yes. of safety is so very important so that when a child does share something really deep, probe that gently without judgment that's mm -hmm. so important for all parents don't react children. don't judge exactly exactly yeah i want to also talk about self-esteem i mean mm -hmm. one of the things that i've seen not only self-esteem in relationships but self-esteem to believe that these kids can actually do the schoolwork when they go back into the school environment. There were a lot of bad habits that started when they were working virtually. Oh, so sure. there's a lot of fears around that. So mm -hmm. how can we help them? Well, start working with the positives and ask, mm -hmm. what's your favorite subject? Why do you like math? What, can, what do you think you might wanna do with math as you get older? What are the subjects that you think you have to work harder at? How do, you th how do you think that that will work? What if you study harder or work with me? I'll help you. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what if, what if, what if, all these what ifs and let the child get into his or her imagination with you, but make yeah. it a very safe place so that his or her imagination can take off. And you want to encourage that imagination and build on that as much as you can. What worries me is that this business about wearing masks and not wearing masks, even the parents don't trust the, the news media anymore. Yeah, exactly. What is truth? What is not truth? What is fact? What is fiction? Who is giving me this information? Who is not? And so masks, no masks. Six, six feet away or not six feet away? What, 
what is real here and how mm -hmm. close can we get? And that's one of the things that Kim Kardashian said. She said, I don't want to go near anybody. And people are always coming up to me as a celebrity yeah. and, they're, and they're trying to touch me. Now we mm -hmm. know that experts have told us that every kid needs eight hugs a day. When they're mm. going through major trauma, 12 hugs a day. Now hugs are, are just as important as a little pat, a touch of the hand, whatever it is, because skin is the largest uh, 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 element that we have on our body. And that, mm -hmm. that is the biggest sensory uh, uh, attention getter. So we yes. have to know whether it's okay, whether it's safe to touch mm -hmm. or not to touch. And for so long, our kids have been out of touch with the word touch. As a matter of fact, I'm very, very concerned about the middle school, middle school children going back to school and the teenagers going back to school because yeah. they too have been so isolated. And unfortunately, a lot of these kids misjudge uh, attention, which they all want. They want their peer attention and they misjudge it as sexuality. And they're mm -hmm. going, they already have been doing things that they're sorry for when they're over. And I worry about how to differentiate reality from non-reality with those kids. Exactly, exactly. Well, Dr. Gilda, I really appreciate you coming on the show and speaking about these very important subjects, helping our kids get back to school. But I'm going to guess there are more questions out there. So how can we find you, get more information and a quick couple of tools uh, you know, for our children to help them and to help the parents? That's easy. DrGilda.com, D-R-G-I-L-D-A.com. I'm always available. I have books on Amazon. I, I, I'm always after one thing. And that's our self-esteem where that is related to our relationships. It's always that's about wonderful. how we relate. That's where it starts. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Dr. Gilda, again, and have a wonderful Saturday. Thank you, Marcy.